Mike Hemsley there from the Energy Transitions Commission. That's all from me. Thank you so much for your company. I'll see you later for World Business Report. This is BBC World News. I'm Celia Hatton. Our top stories. A second day of talks between Russia's President Putin and his guest Xi Jinping in Moscow to discuss China's proposals for ending the war in Ukraine. Recent events have accelerated Russia's dependency on China. Putin and Xi may speak about mutually beneficial cooperation, but Beijing looks increasingly like the senior partner. French police fire tear gas during clashes with protesters in a number of cities after the government narrowly survives a no-confidence vote over its plans to raise the pension age. Britain's biggest police force, the Metropolitan in London, is branded institutionally racist, misogynist and homophobic in a scathing new report looking into its failings. Rape evidence that had to be discarded because the fridges in police stations didn't work. A Sikh officer who had his beard cut by colleagues. The barricades go up in New York in preparation for protests amid speculation of incoming charges for former President Donald Trump. And turning powder into beer. A German brewery comes up with a new product that could change the entire alcohol market and be good for the planet. Hello. China's leader, Xi Jinping, is continuing his high-profile state visit to Russia, where he's been warmly greeted as an old friend by President Putin. Beijing's billed this visit as a trip for peace. Mr. Putin said that Moscow was always open to negotiation, but the Americans have already warned that China's negotiation plan could be just a delaying tactic. From Moscow, our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, reports. Okay, both China and Japan's leaders on the move today. Thank you very much, Sham Halil, for taking us through that. Well, let's get some of the day's other news. Boris Johnson's written evidence that he believes shows that he didn't mislead Parliament over Downing Street parties will be published today. The former British Prime Minister will then be questioned by a cross-party group of MPs on Wednesday. A television journalist in Ecuador has been injured after receiving an envelope containing an explosive device. At least five journalists have been targeted. Local media believe the campaign may be linked to the growing presence of Mexican criminal gangs in Ecuador. Well, stay with us on BBC World News. Still to come. We'll tell you how this new powdered beer could mark a changing point for the beer industry and the planet. This is BBC World News, the latest headlines. A second day of talks between Russia's President Putin and his guest Xi Jinping in Moscow to discuss China's proposals for ending the war in Ukraine. French police fire tear gas during clashes with protesters in a number of cities after the government narrowly survives a no-confidence vote over its plans to raise the pension age. Here's a story making headlines in the UK. A scathing review of Britain's largest police force in London has found it was institutionally racist, misogynistic and homophobic. The report's author, Baroness Casey, said many Londoners had lost faith in the Metropolitan Police and the force could be broken up if it didn't change. The review was commissioned after the murder of a young woman, Sarah Everard, by a serving officer. The Met Police Commissioner says he accepts the report but wouldn't use the term institutional to describe the issues. Our special correspondent, Lucy Manning, has more. 
powdered gin or whiskey. Not sure about that one. Well, write to me. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Celia Hatton. That's all for now. Bye bye. This is BBC World News. The headlines. A second day of talks between Russia's President Putin and his guest Xi Jinping in Moscow to discuss China's proposals for ending the war in Ukraine. But the U.S. has warned the proposals could be a delaying tactic. Police in France have fired tear gas during clashes with protesters in a number of cities after the government narrowly survived a no-confidence vote over its plans to raise the pension age. Britain's biggest police force, the Metropolitan in London, has been branded institutionally racist, misogynist and homophobic in a scathing new report looking into its failings. Its author said many Londoners had lost faith in the force. Police in major U.S. cities are preparing for potential unrest in case ex-president Donald Trump is arrested this week as part of a hushed money inquiry. Authorities in Washington, D.C., New York and Los Angeles are ramping up their law enforcement presence. Iraq. The decision was hugely controversial, with the U.S. and the U.K. insisting that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, a claim that turned out not to be true. The Allied countries also declared at the time that the Iraqi leader, Saddam Hussein, posed a threat to international peace. Our international editor, Jeremy Bowen, looks at the lasting impact of the Iraq war two decades on. Well, you're watching BBC World News. Now, it's time for the sports news. Hello there, I'm Paul Scott at the BBC Sports Centre. Arsenal take on Bayern Munich in the UEFA Women's Champions League on Tuesday and they're hoping to avoid a second straight quarter-final exit at the hands of German opponents after going out at the same stage to Wolfsburg last season. And that is all from the world of sport for now. Love the goats. Well, now something a little bit different. The White House has been hosting the cast of the sporting comedy show Tad Lasso. While it's easier said than done, I, I, we also have to know that we shouldn't be afraid to ask for help ourselves. And that, that does take a lot, especially when it's something... President like Biden invited uh, Jason Sudeikis and, and his castmates from the hit mental Apple mental Plus mental series to discuss either. mental health. It's, it's a subject the show has addressed directly with the lead character, the American coach of the fictional English soccer team AFC Redmond, seeking out therapy to address anxiety and the collapse of his mares. Well, it's just a fantastic show. And stay with us on BBC World. Coming up next, Real Business Report. Bye-bye for now. Now on BBC World News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. As the markets adjust to the false rescue of Credit Suisse, what are the risks now to the wider banking sector? And we have a special report from India where a new coal mining project has stirred up local protests for a year. Hello and a very warm welcome. You're with World Business Report with me, Sally Bundock. And we start with a fresh look at the banking sector and Credit Suisse in particular. Early market jitters in response to the UBS takeover of the Swiss bank eased. In Asia today, most of the main stock markets were higher with Japan closed for a public holiday. The major indices in Europe and the US are closed, uh, closed slightly up as well on Monday. Of course, the European day starts in around 10 minutes time. Credit Suisse is one of 30 crucially important banks in the global financial system and many fear its problems are an indicator of wider risks in the banking sector. So far this month, US and European banking stocks have fallen by 22% and 17% respectively, marking the biggest monthly falls since March 2020 when the COVID pandemic hit markets. Here's Michelle Fleury with more from New York. 
Michelle Fleury there. Well, I got the view of Anne Berry on that, founder of Thread Needle, who told me how uh, she thinks the Fed will uh, react to all of this at its meetings this week. Anne Berry there from Threadneedle. Now on to other stories. For the last decade, forest-dwelling people in the eastern Indian state of Chhattisgarh have been strenuously opposing a new coal mining project by the Adani Group, one of India's biggest conglomerates. Despite their resistance, final clearances to the project were granted last year, which triggered an indefinite agitation that's been going on now every day for the past year. Our reporter Nikhil Anamdar sent this report from the epicentre of the protests. Now we've got time to squeeze in a few more business stories. The two big banks which served the sex abuser Jeffrey Epstein are to face allegations in court that they benefited from his crimes. JP Morgan Chase and Deutsche Bank are accused of having knowingly benefited from participating in a sex trafficking venture although other allegations have been dismissed by a New York judge. JP Morgan's lawyers have argued the claims are meritless, whilst Deutsche Bank says they were manufactured allegations. And Sri Lanka is receiving an immediate lifeline of $333 million from the International Monetary Fund as the first tranche of a near $3 billion bailout. That was something that was brokered uh, yesterday, but with of course, tough conditions attached as always. So that is World Business Report. Thank you so much for your company. I'll see you soon. This is BBC World News. I'm Celia Hatton. Our top stories. A second day of talks between Russia's President Putin and his guest, Xi Jinping, in Moscow to discuss China's proposals for ending the war in Ukraine. Recent events have accelerated Russia's dependency on China. Putin and Xi may speak about mutually beneficial cooperation, but Beijing looks increasingly like the senior partner. As the China-Russia summit on Ukraine continues, the Japanese Prime Minister makes a surprise visit to Kyiv, promising unwavering support. Britain's biggest police force, the Metropolitan in London, is branded institutionally racist, misogynist and homophobic in a scathing new report looking into its failings. Rape evidence that had to be discarded because the fridges in police stations didn't work. A Sikh officer who had his beard cut by colleagues. The barricades go up in New York in preparation for protests amid speculation of incoming charges for former President Donald Trump. And turning powder into beer. A German brewery comes up with a new product that could change the entire alcohol market and be good for the planet. For all of you watching on PBS and around the war globe, a warm welcome. China's leader Xi Jinping is continuing his high-profile state visit to Russia, where he's been warmly greeted as an old friend by President Putin. Beijing's billed this visit as a trip for peace. Mr. Putin said that Moscow was always open to negotiation. But the Americans have already warned that China's negotiation plan on Ukraine could be just a delaying tactic. From Moscow, our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, reports. Mm, had a really dynamic time for Japan on the world stage. Th thank you very much, Shaima Khalil, speaking to us from Tokyo. Of course, we're going to be following uh, the uh, visit uh, of uh, Fumio Kishida to Kyiv very closely throughout the day. Well, stay with us on BBC World News. Still to come. We'll tell you how this new powdered beer could mark a changing point for the beer industry and the planet. BBC News. Well, here in the UK, a scathing review of Britain's largest police force, London's Metropolitan Police, has found it to be institutionally racist, misogynistic and homophobic. The report's author, Baroness Casey, 
So many Londoners had lost faith in the Metropolitan Police, and the force could be broken up if it didn't change. The review was commissioned after the murder of a young woman, Sarah Everard, by a serving police officer. Lucy Manning reports. Well, if it's good for the planet, I'm open to trying it. You can reach me on Twitter, write to me. I'm at Celia Hatton. That's all for now. Bye-bye. Hello there.